everyone. Thanks for joining back in with me again this week. I know I say that every week, but as I prepare these Bible stories for you, I get so excited because I know that we're going to be studying God's Word together. So today, we're going to finish up the, the story of this wonderful Old Testament King Hezekiah. Uh, oftentimes in the Old Testament, we read about these kings and they were evil and they did all these terrible things. In this case, we get to see what happens with a godly king. So let's, let's just review a little bit about what we learned last week with Hezekiah. We know that Hezekiah lived during a period of time when the southern tribes of Judah and Benjamin came under um, attack from the nation of the Assyrians up here. And here's tiny little Judah over here around Jerusalem. And this mighty army had come down and tried to capture Jerusalem. And we found last week that Jerusalem was under was threatened to be under siege, which would have destroyed the people. They would have starved to death or been burned out behind the walls of Jerusalem. And the Bible tells us that Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, both the son of Amos, cried out in prayer to God in heaven. Hezekiah actually laid the letters in front of the Lord with all of the terrible things that the Assyrians, uh, Sennacherib, had written, saying that they had no power to stand up against the Assyrians. And God proved them wrong and destroyed the, um, the army that was camped outside. This is Hezekiah's prayer that we studied last week. Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, enthroned between the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Give ear, Lord, and listen and hear. Open your eyes, Lord, and see. Listen to all the words of Sennacherib has sent to ridicule the living God. It is true, Lord, that the Assyrian kings have laid waste to all the, these peoples and their lands. They've thrown their gods into the fire and destroyed them, for they were not gods but only wood and stone fashioned by human hands. Now, Lord our God, deliver us from his hand so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, Lord, are the only God. What a great prayer Hezekiah prayed. He praised God, he laid out what the problem was, and he beseeched God's help. God answered, and the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 32, 21, that the Lord sent an angel who annihilated all the fighting men and the commanders and officers in the camp of the Assyrian king. So when he withdrew, he withdrew in disgrace to his own land. And when he went into the temple of his God, some of his sons, his own son, his own flesh and blood, cut him down with the sword. And 185,000 soldiers and officials died that day. Jerusalem was saved without even uh, the people lifting a hand. God's work totally, based upon Hezekiah's wonderful prayer. So the Lord saved Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others during Hezekiah's early reign. <coughs> he took care of them on every side, and there was peace at last throughout his realm. Many brought offerings to Jerusalem for the Lord and valuable gifts to Hezekiah, king of Judah. For then on he was highly respected by all of the surrounding nations. Everybody heard about this. They heard about the Assyrian king, Sennacherib, coming to siege, lay siege to Jerusalem, and how the army was miraculously, they, all the soldiers died uh, all in one night. There were all these, uh, they all died, and they had to, they went home in disgrace. So this made big news in Hezekiah's time. But it was just around this time, or just before this, that Hezekiah became very ill and was at the point of death. Now, last week we discovered that Hezekiah became king when he was young, in his 20s. So early in his reign, they said in the 14th year of his reign, Sennacherib came to besiege Jerusalem. So at this point, if, he, if Hezekiah became king when he was 25, 35, 39 years old, say around 40 or a little less, at this point, something happened and Hezekiah became very ill. 
the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you're going to die and you will not recover. Remember, for all intents and purposes, Hezekiah is still young. He's too young to hear that type of a death sentence, I'm sure. So Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. And he said, Remember, Lord, how I walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Hezekiah had done such a good job up to this point. He had gone behind his father and undid all of the evil that his father had done. Remember last week I told you his father had even had the doors to the temple nailed shut. Hezekiah opened that up and cleaned out all the trash in the temple. He reinstated the Passover service, and there was great revival in Hezekiah's time. So Hezekiah takes this to the Lord, because this is a praying man, took this to the Lord and said, Look how I have served you, Lord. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. But before Isaiah had even left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. While Isaiah was leaving, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall in his bed and was crying out to the Lord. And even before Hezekiah left, the Lord talks to Isaiah and says, Go back and tell Hezekiah, the ruler of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father, David, says. I heard your prayer and have seen your tears. I will heal you. And on the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord. Now here's a man that's on his deathbed and God says in the, on the third day you're going to be well enough to go up to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life and I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. So we know that this event took place before the Assyrian invasion but right about the same time. Then Isaiah said, prepare a poultice of figs. They did so, and they applied it to the boil, and he recovered. So apparently, um, uh, Hezekiah had some type of an infected boil. He had some infection in his body that caused this boil to come up onto his body. So um, Isaiah tells the servants to prepare a poultice of figs. Um, and they placed it on the boil wherever the boil was and that must have dealt with the infection in the boil and he eventually recovered. So when King Hezekiah was well again, he wrote this poem. This is what Hezekiah wrote. He said, I said, in the prime of my life, must I now enter the place of the dead? Am I to be robbed of the rest of my years? I said, never again while I see the Lord God while still in the land of the living. Never again will I see my friends or be with those who live in this world. Delirious, I chattered like a swallow or a crane, and then I moaned like a mourning dove. My eyes grew tired of looking to heaven for help. I'm in trouble, Lord, help me. But what could I say? For he himself sent this sickness. Now I will walk humbly throughout my years because of this anguish I have felt. Lord, your discipline is good, for it leads to life and health. You restore my health and allow me to live. Yes, this anguish was good for me, for you have rescued me from death and forgiven all my sins. So Hezekiah pours out his heart in this writing that says he was in great pain. He was moaning and he was feverish and delirious. And Hezekiah recognizes that it is the Lord alone that healed him and he rejoices in that he said this was good for me to experience this because now I know that you healed me and that you have forgiven all of my sins first Peter 3 12 says for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil so the Lord was listening to Hezekiah all this time and the Lord saw what was going on, and he saw Hezekiah crying out to him. Hezekiah then asked Isaiah, What will be the sign 
that the Lord will heal me and that I will go up to the temple on the third day from now. And Isaiah answered, This is the Lord's sign to you that the Lord will do as he promised. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or shall it go back 10 degrees? So what is Isaiah talking about the shadow? What's he talking about? Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or shall it go back 10 degrees? Well, Hezekiah answered, it's easy. It's an easy thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees, but let the shadow go back 10 degrees. What he's talking about is a sundial. That's how they kept time. They had what was known as an ordinary sundial. And as the sun moves across the earth, the shadow moves on the sundial. So what Isaiah is saying, it's normal and easy for the shadow to continue to move in this direction. As the sun moves across the horizon over the earth, the shadow automatically moves this way. He said, let the shadow move back 10 degrees that way. That will be very irregular and that will be the sign. So Isaiah the prophet cried out to the Lord and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward by which it had gone down on the sundial of Ahaz. This is a sundial. So as the sun moves around, the shadow moves around this way, and these numbers on here are how they kept time. This is like the arms of a clock. As it goes around the clock, it tells what time it is. So the same thing, they kept time with the sun. So what Isaiah was saying, it's normal. What Hezekiah said, it's normal for the shadow to go this way. So the sign should be that the shadow goes backwards, and that's exactly what happened. God allowed this miracle to prove to Hezekiah that he had heard his prayer and that he would heal him, and that's exactly what he did. So from this point on, Hezekiah was very wealthy and highly honored. He built special treasury buildings for his silver and gold and precious stones and spices and for his shields and other valuable items. He experienced God's blessing on him. He also constructed many storehouses for his grain, new wine and olive oil. He made many stalls for his cattle and pens for his flocks of sheep and goat. He built many towns and acquired vast flocks and herds for God had given him great wealth. So where did the wealth come from? The wealth came from God. It was God blessing Hezekiah that caused this increased wealth. He also blocked up the upper spring of Gihon and brought the water down through a tunnel to the west side of the city of David, and he so he succeeded in everything he did. We're going to talk about this tunnel now. He blocked up the upper spring in Gihon and brought the water down through a tunnel to the west side of the city of David. That's Jerusalem brought the water supply down into the city. He was successful in everything he did. H however, he had a problem. When the ambassadors arrived from Babylon to ask about the remarkable events that had taken place in the land, that would be his miraculous healing and also the destruction of the Assyrian army, God withdrew from Hezekiah in order to test him and see what was really in his heart. Unfortunately, as good as Hezekiah was, he had, a, he had fallen into pride. Remember, God had given him great wealth? Well, Hezekiah was proud of that wealth. So God was testing him to see what was in his heart. So at that time, Mardok Baladin, the son of Baladin, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters and gifts because he had heard of Hezekiah's illness. Hezekiah received the envoys and showed them all that was in his storehouses, the silver, the gold, the spices, and the fine oil from his armory and everything found among his treasures. There was nothing in the palace or in his kingdom that Hezekiah didn't show them. When I read that, I said, oh no, Hezekiah, why have you done that? Why would you ever let anybody know where all the gold was stored? But Hezekiah had this, he made this mistake. He showed them, these foreigners showed them all the wealth. Well, what do you think that did when they took this information back? 
Isaiah, the prophet, went to King Hezekiah and asked, What did those men say and where did they come from? From a distant land, Hezekiah replied. They came from Babylon. The prophet asked, What did they see in your palace? They saw everything in my palace, Hezekiah said. There's nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. See, Babylon is way over here. The, the approaching army that was a threat to Hezekiah was the Assyrian Empire up here. They are the ones that came down and they are the ones that took the northern tribes away, but not the southern tribes. But it is years later under Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon, they are the ones that came and took the southern tribe away. And it happened because of what Hezekiah did. He allowed these envoys from Babylon to see all the treasure that there was in Jerusalem. The time, Isaiah says, the time will surely come when everything in your palace and all your predecessors have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. And some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, who will be born to you, will be taken away, and they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Oh, my. Did that ever come true? You betcha, it did. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, This message you have given me from the Lord is good, for the king was thinking, At least there will be peace and security during my lifetime. So did this prophecy come true? Daniel chapter 1 describes just exactly that. The Babylonians under King Nebuchadnezzar captured Jerusalem and carried away the people into captivity and all of the gold and silver and everything, all the artifacts that were in the temple. And they also took all the young nob noblemen in Judah, all the princes and all, including Daniel and his friends, about a hundred years later. The Bible says that they were made eunuchs in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar. So this prophecy that Isaiah says to King Hezekiah came true a hundred years later. So I'm going to go back a second to this map. A hundred years later, King Nebuchadnezzar set his sights on Jerusalem, captured Jerusalem, and carried away all the noblemen and all the people and children of, of Judah sacked and burned Jerusalem and carried them away to captivity in Babylon, which included Daniel. You can read about it in the book of Daniel, exactly as Isaiah prophesied. And they were there for 70 years. As for the other events in Hezekiah's reign, all his achievements and how he made the pool and the tunnel by which he brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the annals? Of the kings of Judah we read about that in the in the second Kings so here's a map of what we're talking about this city of Jerusalem is built on the top of the mountain so to get water down to this side of the city Hezekiah built this tunnel so that the water that was up here coming naturally from this spring could flow through to this part of the city so Hezekiah's tunnel if you go over to Jerusalem today, you can see this tunnel. Without access to adequate water sources, Jerusalem was extremely vulnerable to being besieged. Remember that siege I talked to you about? They could cut off the water supply and the people would starve to death. Thus, King Hezekiah built a tunnel which channeled water from the Gihon Spring into the Kidron Valley to protect the reservoir on the west side of the city, thus allowing Jerusalem to survive the siege of the Assyrian king Sennacherib. He had made plans for that siege. The Siloam Tunnel inscription describes the process of this construction. They, had, they found this in Turkey. They found this inscription which describes what King Hezekiah did. So if you go over to, to Jerusalem today, you can actually tour and go down into the tunnel that Hezekiah built. It's, it's there. It did, used to have water supply running through it. It probably doesn't now, and it's a tourist thing that you can actually go see. This your girl goes down through this tunnel, and this is Hezekiah's tunnel. Isn't this great? When they discover things in archaeology that uh, back up or correlate with 
what you learn in the Bible, it makes it real. This is a picture of the, uh, of the water coming out of Hezekiah's tunnel. I love it. King Hezekiah, they've also found in archaeology digs, they've actually found uh, Hezekiah's seal. Um, you know, each king, uh, we, we saw, we talked about this seal when we were doing the story of Judah and Tamar a couple weeks ago, where she asked for his cylinder, remember around his neck, that contained his seal? Well, this is the seal. This is Hezekiah's seal. And it tells you on this seal that Hezekiah ruled from 727 to 698 BC, and he lived at the same time as the prophet Isaiah. And what's written on the seal is, Hezekiah's seal, it belongs to Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judah. So Hezekiah rested with his fathers, and then Manasseh, his son, reigned in his place. So this is the historical record of this wonderful Old Testament king that did so many good works for the Lord. The Lord rescued him from Sennacherib. The Lord provided him with healing because of this devastating illness and gave him 15 more years of life. So for us, when we study this, we know that uh, in Psalm 34, 17 and 18, we know that King David also knew what Hezekiah also knew. The righteous cry out and the Lord heal, hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. That's what happened to Hezekiah. He was crushed in his spirit and he cried out to the Lord and the Lord heard him. The Bible says that when Chuck Swindell, Chuck Swindoll, famous Christian author says, when no one else remembers, God records, the psalmist tells us he keeps our tears in a bottle. Psalm 56, 8 says, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. Think about that. Hezekiah's tears, God saw his tears. God sees every tear you have ever cried. Some of us have cried mightily in our lifetime. I know I have. And just the word picture of this, that God keeps all those tears in a bottle. What a wonderful God we serve, that he would hear your individual tears. Every tear you ever cried, God knows about. Isn't that amazing? So friends, we'll leave it there this week with this wonderful ending to the story of King Hezekiah. He lived a good life. God blessed him with great wealth. He had success. And I only wish the rest of the kings of Judah had been just as good as he was. Unfortunately, they weren't. So let's leave this story today and we'll end in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for this Old Testament story of Hezekiah. Thank you, Lord, that we had a king who called out to you and you answered. You answered in a physical way. You protected the entire city of Jerusalem from slaughter. You heard this godly king's prayer. He turned his face to the wall. He cried out to you. And before he even finished praying, you already were answering. And Lord, we've had these things happen to us in our lifetime too. I'm sure that there's many a time that I cried many a time that my friends and family cried and you heard those cries and you answered those prayers. Sometimes our prayers aren't answered the way we think that they, we want them to be. Sometimes, Lord, we don't receive the answer we're looking for, but it doesn't mean that you didn't hear. Sometimes your will means that something different has to happen, but your will for Hezekiah was that he get well. Your will was that he knew and know that it was you that healed him. That was the most important thing. When we see these answers to prayer, let us each and every one be thankful and grateful when you hear and when you answer. Because we know, Lord, that you do hear us. We thank you for this and we praise you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, friends, we'll leave it at that for this week. And I hope you'll join in with me next week and I'll bring you another Bible story. 
Thank you and have a great week. God bless.